to try to start fixing this when it releases its highly anticipated innovation statement. It wants to invigorate Australia's start-up sector by overhauling support, funding and education. Hayden Cooper looks at what's needed and what's at stake. Silicon Valley, California, the centre of the startup universe and home to the world's tech giants. Hobart, Tasmania, small city on a small island and home to three guys with a big dream. We have a vision in terms of where we want to take the product. We'd like to be the number one video maker in the world. Biteable is a company that enables users to make short videos like this one. It already has 90,000 customers all over the world, and the three brains behind it grew up together on the Apple Isle. We're profitable at the moment. Um, it's definitely not a cash cow. We've got a long way to go, but you know we've got a nice, uh, steady little business. In the tech world in general now, there's a bit of a backlash against the notion that you have to be in Silicon Valley and I think we're an example of that. In Sydney, Quilla is another Aussie company joining the backlash. Its founder once worked for Google, but now he's out on his own with a product that turns ordinary documents into interactive web pages. The whole idea behind it is that the document, as we understand it, is this very old, boring thing from the 80s an A4 piece of paper that really can't do very much in our modern world. And what we've done at Quiller is just embrace the web. So we make it easy for businesses to make these documents as little web pages, and the web can do a whole bunch of amazing things. Like Biteable, Quiller searched for and found investment from Australia's limited venture capital funds, or VCs. The vast majority of our customers come from, at this stage, the US and Australia. Mm -hmm. um, but as these two companies grow, attracting funding locally will only get harder. For us right now, we're you know, deep in the trenches trying to grow the business and make it work. But it is in the back of our mind that the next time we need to raise capital, we will almost certainly, in fact, we will certainly be going to America to have conversations there as well as having conversations here. In Australia, there's a handful of VCs. There's probably only realistically three or four that actually invest at the seed stage, which is the stage we're at. So it, it makes your options quite limited. Um, whereas in the US, there's hundreds. It's an old dilemma. Australia is renowned as a brilliant inventor, but an average salesman. Commercialising and selling bold new ideas is a perennial industry weakness. G'day. How are you on? Great to meet you. Good to see you. you. Nice right. come through. Nice place. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty awesome, yeah. Sebastian Eckersley-Maslin is trying to change that. He runs what's known as an incubator or accelerator. His firm, Blue Chili, invests in and provides office space and advice for fledgling startups, helping connect them with capital. Um, so we've got an example of one of our companies right here. So these boys at How About Eat, um, basically it allows you to order your own lunch uh, every single day just with a text message. They send you an option uh, and they end up um, you know, sending you the business. So you want to give a quick elevator pitch, Gio? Every day he's bombarded with thought bubbles. And we get around 200 ideas pitched to us every single month from entrepreneurs who want to start a business. Every month, 200 ideas. Now, I would say not all of them are good, but uh, you know, we take the top two to three businesses every month and we're creating these to help you know, accomplish our goals, but also, more importantly, to help the startups build their startups. This is the nation Australia wants to emulate. Israel's booming tech startup sector reels in billions of dollars in investment every year. It's based on a model of matched government funding, often through incubators. Unsurprisingly, Blue Chili wants the government here to copy that model. If an incubator like Blue Chili puts $100,000 into a startup, the Israeli government will put $500,000 as a loan into that startup. And so Israel, a population of New South Wales in a landmass the size of Greater Sydney, has this level of activity because the government has taken a view that accelerator incubators as a model is there as a key piece of the infrastructure to be able to take ideas, commercialise them and then feed them into the rest of the VC uh, uh, ecosystem. The Israeli influence in Canberra is evident. As the innovation statement was drafted, Australian politicians and public servants were flying back and forth studying the country's success. And Israel's chief scientist 
was just wrapping up a visit here. What makes Israel special is not the fact that we have a specific part of the puzzle, it's the whole thing. It's the excellent scientific academic research combined with a high level of entrepreneurship. It's a very sophisticated uh, capital market, financing market, angel investors, venture capital firms and so on, and a supportive government. And, and most importantly, it's about interconnecting all these, these pieces. The entrepreneurs at Biteable and Quilla are full of ideas for the government, like bring more digital experts into the country to boost talent. We need a lot more of them. We don't have them in Australia in enough quantity. Allow super funds to invest in startups despite their risk. If there was a, a way to just open up that sleeping giant of cash. And relax laws on crowdfunding. It's something that can enable these early stage ideas to get some community support, get that early little bit of money that allows them to quit their job, start working on it full time and try to make it a, a proper business. But that is just one part of the innovation picture. The other crucial one expected to be addressed next week is harnessing the diaspora, world-beating Australians spread across the globe whose expertise is needed at home. Individuals who are truly punching above their weight across every industry that we want to excel in and they want to give back. Serafina Majorano lives in New York and runs Advance, an organisation that represents the one million Australians based overseas. 20,000 are in Silicon Valley alone. There's many Australians in the Valley. There's many in New York as well and Boston. So Boston is biotech centre. What is needed is really to scale what we're doing already. I mean, we're, we already create programs where those uh, Australians in the Valley are helping Australians grow and scale their companies from here. What, what is needed is the opportunity to do more programs and scale those programs, not only in the Valley, into Israel. I mean, learning from the Israeli tech um, ecosystem, what they've done and how they've harnessed their diaspora. China is another one, you know, Hong Kong and Singapore. There's so many opportunities for us to grow companies globally in very different markets around the world where Australians can actually help. There's an unmistakable sense of optimism ahead of next week's announcement. A startup friendly PM energised by innovation has created high expectations. The question now, can he deliver on the hype? Australia is at sort of this cusp here where we have a fantastic opportunity to really take ownership of the next wave of technological progress you know, globally and actually leverage the fact that digital based businesses can be based anywhere. Um, so it's a very, very exciting time. Any new startup, any new venture, any big idea is an experiment and you don't know whether it's going to work uh, and you obviously throw your heart, your soul, your time, your energy, your money into trying to make it work. I'm a firm believer that the industry will do it whether or not the government supports us and we're going to keep moving forward but obviously the more the government can do to help, the better. Hayden Cooper reporting.